We're digging deep and asking the questions we need to ask. Years of stress and not just emotional. I was depleting my body. I was malnourished. I'm working out like crazy. I'm eating all these healthy foods. How could I not be well? We have to get back to the basics. We can change the way our genes are expressed. Anyone that wants to improve their health or upgrade their health, they should be biohacking. My name is Renee. And I'm Lauren. We are the Biohacker Babes. We're sisters and we're joining forces to empower you to become your own biohacker and upgrade your life. The Biohacker Babes podcast aims to create insight into the body's natural healing abilities, strengthen your intuition, and empower you with techniques and modalities to optimize your health and wellness. Because life is too short to not feel your best every single day. This podcast offers health, fitness, and nutritional information and is designed for educational purposes only. You should not rely on this information as a substitute for, nor does it replace professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. If you have any concerns or questions about your health, you should always consult with a physician or other healthcare professional. Thank you for joining us and welcome to the show. Welcome to episode 33 of the Biohacker Babes. I am Lauren. I'm here with my sister, Renee. Hey, everyone. Happy Monday. Today, we welcome our very good friend, Freddie Kimmel, who is also a fellow health coach. Uh, We are so excited to be hanging with him on air today. If you don't know who Freddie is, you should. You need to. He was a major inspiration for us to start this podcast in the first place. He also has a kick-ass, incredibly powerful podcast, and he's doing a dozen other amazing things in the world right now. So we're going to let him tell you all about his magic, but here's a bio for you to get started. Freddie Kimmel is a transformational coach, host, and creator of the Beautifully Broken podcast and part of the management team at AmpCoil. He has been featured in the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, State of the Arts on LA Talk Radio, and in Dance Magazine. He is also a proud survivor of metastatic cancer, Lyme, and mold. Yes, he is that lucky. For Freddie, one of the greatest blessings has been the presence of chronic illness for the last 20 years. I've gained the awareness of what truly matters through the knowledge that I can do anything and faith in the strength and power I possess as a child of the universe. I am here for a purpose and openly accept what comes next. That is a direct quote from Freddie himself. Freddie has a bachelor's of fine arts from SUNY Brockport and in conjunction with starting freddysetgo.com has performed all over the country in Broadway touring productions of Phantom of the Opera, Billy Elliot, and played the title role in the Broadway bound Cagney the Musical in New York City, all packed in between chemotherapy sessions and surgeries. Yes, you too can do anything. That is incredible. Freddie, wow. welcome. welcome. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It is such a unique, um, it's such a unique treat to have your own bio read to you. <laughs> You're yeah. like, I did all that. That's amazing. Right? Oh, it's like a good perspective. Reminder. That is you. Such yeah. an incredible story. I'm so excited for you. Where do you want to start? This oh, is all you. Goodness. This is all me. So, so I can, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll just, I'll tie up like a nice little Christmas bow, that intro that we just did, the long and the short of it is, yeah, a, a, a big chunk of my life, though I don't like to view it that way, has been working through chronic illness from, from 2001. You know, I moved to, to New York City in 2001 to go pursue theater and music and dance and song. And, and within two months of being in the city, you know, the city was still smoking and ash from 9-11. Mm-hmm. I walked around the city looking for a job and in, in, in smoke. Wow. And I remember that stress and the sadness on the subways from people interacting with me. And I was picking it up. I was Physically, picking the, emotionally picking it up in my yeah, body. Definitely. And I would I would go home to my apartment and I remember taking a shower and just laying on the tub floor and just crying. And it was the first time as an adult male, I remember having these emotional releases until I woke up one day with just horrible, like autoimmune RA type joint pain, which I just totally hid and ate indomethacin and Advil like candy. And, you know, cut to three years later, I wandered into an emergency room after a misdiagnosis 
and was filled with metastatic cancer. I had had testicular cancer spread to over nine organs in my abdomen. Doctors looked at me right away. They said, we've got to, we've got to do something today. We've got to get this out of you. So I was in a show. It was like, I'm singing and dancing. I'm, I'm prepping to do my first production contract at the Kennedy Center in DC. And all of a sudden I'm making these massive life decisions on Am I going to open up my body first with this massive surgery or am I going to start chemotherapy at 26 years old? So it was the ultimate shock to the system. And I, I, I luckily was caught by my family, had this amazing support system and did all the treatments, did these crazy, crazy surgeries. One's called a retroperitoneal lymph node dissection where they cut from your pelvis to your sternum, they take out all your gut, small intestines, you know, they, they cut out all the tumors, which are your lymph, lymph nodes, which are all are infected. And they put it all back together and they literally zip you up, they, you know, 50, 60 staples. So I'm like learning how to like, I'm being carried into the shower to take a shower. So humbling at 26 and Oof. no real perception of like what's coming next. You know, I'm, I'm still dreaming about that. Hopefully in two months, I can get my act together and get into this production of the carnival at the Kennedy Center. You know, so I'm, I'm um, facing this new reality. I moved through it. And shortly after I went through this traumatic experience of cancer chemotherapy, I started to be rushed to the emergency room with uh, a twisting of the small bowel small bowel adhesions, which is very, very common, something I'm very passionate about is scar tissue. And I had these scar tissue loops forming around my small bowel. And I would go from, from just being standing and I would twist and reach for like something on a counter and my bowel would twist and I'd be vomiting for two, three days, multiple times rushed to the emergency room where they'd remove a foot of intestine. Mm. So this is happening, you know, I'm, I'm visiting the emergency room eight, 10 times in a three year span. And finally, you know, it's, it's 2015, I go through another one of these surgeries and my immune system, my body totally crashes, chronic fatigue, Epstein-Barr, we found Lyme disease in my, in my blood. I have everything, everything. So you can imagine like my body's in such shock and trauma. I can't clean out anything at a cellular level. It's the ultimate example of like, a shutdown. We could, we could talk about what it means to have the body shut down, but I'm kind of living in this fight or flight. So very slowly I start to biohack my way back to, to better health because doctors I'm told from a a medical standpoint, doctors, I'm having these consults with these physicians. I remember this very well all over New York city. I'm having doctors say, we won't touch you with a 10 foot pole. You're a liability. We don't even want to do a surgery to correct the obstruction because you're going to lawsuit waiting to happen right now. I mean, that's happened number, a number of times with different practitioners throughout, throughout the city. And I can't tell you what an isolating experience that is saying, well, I'm really sick. Why, why won't somebody show up and, and at least take care of me or help me or point me in the right direction? So I really did it on my own. You know, I started to incorporate things like fasting and the paleo diet and I bought an ozone machine and started injecting myself with ozone gas directly into my veins. Like <laughs> to, you do. <laughs> like you do. Like you do. Um, you know, and I, I, I think it was a path, right? It's a path towards wellness for me, like making changes and seeing shifts in my energy level right away. And I could go down eight different rabbit holes of, of different things that were good and bad and beneficial. But, you know, I spent a couple hundred thousand dollars trying to get myself well average, uh, average a year was like 32 grand and like Amazon <laughs> supplements, mm. um, medical practitioners, hyperbaric chambers. You know, I went, I, I, I did everything and I was doing a lot of this stuff in secrecy because one thing that's very interesting about a chronic illness. And then I want to stop talking is that, is that you, you have so much empathy when you're, when you're going through cancer, everybody understands cancer. But Lyme and chronic mold, people, they sort of want to like turn their shoulder. They're like, well, you're crazy. You look fine. You you're look the fine. You're walking wounded, right? You're the walking wounded. And, and I was dying inside very much so to the point I remember standing on 
51st Street and looking at a statue of the, the Virgin Mary covered with snow. And I was like, I just prayed. I was like, I just don't want to live like this anymore. I just don't want to do it. I don't want to live. I, I'm not, you know, it's, it's not an enjoyable experience. And I, I just kind of drew a line in the sand and I was like, I'm just going to start changing things. I'm just going to start altering the way I eat and move. And um, the, the people that I go to in for information, you know, the quality of doctor and practitioner, I'm going to up level and start looking to more functional medicine. And when I started answering um, my own, my own body's yearning for a change, when I started asking myself different questions, I started to get different answers. So, you know, that, that experiment leads me to today. What happened that maybe like opened the new world to, like you said, fasting, the paleo diet, did that just come from within or did a friend say something? No, I actually read this book. I remember I picked up a book and it was an article about a a woman who had been in a car accident and she had broken like a hundred bones in her body and she was all on all these pain meds. And I, I, I read this book and she had changed her diet to like a paleo type situation. And through the, the advent of, you know, eating clean and fasting and all these unique modalities, she had moved herself away from any prescription medications. And I was like, right away, I read that story. I can do that. And so I did it like the very next day, like this is 2000, I think it's 2009. And this is in the middle of a lot of stuff, but I just totally cut out sugar. I cut out anything like, you know, uh, uh, no bread, no grains, no flour, no sugar. I went hardcore. I never have eaten those things again, ever. And and I noticed an immediate reduction in pain and inflammation. Immediate. And so that was really powerful for me. Yeah, it was it was it was the first time I had this evidentiary proof that, wow, look at, look at the power I have as a human being. I actually don't wait for an appointment, for a doctor, for a permission slip to, um, to grab a prescription or somebody else's outside source. I just made the choice. I changed my food. I had a huge improvement in my inflammation. So that was really what, that was really, I can, and I, I can still remember the conversation with my mom. I'm like, I changed all these things and, and I, I really feel great. And, you know, it was funny. No, nobody had like the wow factor that I did. I was like, no, this is really incredible. Like I don't even, I'm not even taking all this endomethacin anymore, this pain medication. I'm really noticing a shift. So, it was like the start of your biohacking. Really? You were like, if I change this, I feel better. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm curious. What was your relationship with nutrition, health and wellness before? Did you have a relationship? You know, I, I, I'll be honest with you while I was going to chemo, I would grab double egg McMuffin sandwiches and hash browns from McDonald's. Um, there was no, (laughs) there was no awareness around nutrition. Other than that, I was really scared of losing weight because Hmm. there's this fear around chemotherapy and that people are going to go through this muscle wasting, which is really that has nothing to do with chemo that it has to do with like an advanced cancer, which is taking over your metabolic processes. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's the body shutting down this, that muscle wasting that has nothing to do with chemo really, honestly. Hmm. And, and I remember doctors telling me you need to eat, like force yourself to eat. You're not going to be hungry, do whatever you can to get calories in. And oh, wow. my first surgery to, to remove my, because when you have testicular cancer, they take out one of your boys. They're like, you're going to lose a testicle today. And I was like, great, let's get it out of there. It's got cancer and I don't want it. I did ask for it after and they said, no, they're like, we can't give it to you. I was like, okay. I was going to like bury it in the yard or something. <laughs> you wouldn't give it back to you? <laughs> no, How dare no, no. they? They just <laughs> took it away from you and that they was that? They took it away. That was that. Aww. But I remember the uh-huh. doctor saying, I remember the doctor, I came out of surgery. The, the, the doctor was like, wow, well, the nurses were like, this guy's got like a 12 pack. Like they were commenting on your physique. And when I went in for surgery, lymph node dissection, which is right, I had been on chemotherapy for, I don't know, six months or whatever. And I had eaten McDonald's and not exercise and like done all these awful things. I had like a belt, like I gained lots of body fat. And my surgeon was like, huh, 
I don't remember cutting through so much visceral belly fat last time we did surgery. Oh, wow. You, oh which is a really nice way of your doctor telling you you're fat now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Thank which you so all, much, it, doctor. I know. It all evened out. It all evened out. I was in that, that surgery did not go incredibly well. I was, I was in intensive care for, for like 12 days. I didn't eat. I ate ice chips. It was like the longest fast I've ever done. Wow. Um, but it, in yes, yes. After that, you you will lose belly fat also. So that was, oh my gosh. you know, that I had so no. So what was so, the moment when you had a shift in perspective? What was the moment where you're like, I need to eat real food? You know, the, I read this book about a woman who had been in this tor- horrible accident, you know, and, and broken all these bones, changed her food and gotten off prescription meds. And the paleo diet was like her way in. So that was, that was like my way in. But you know, I kept getting these additional clues from the universe, different lesson plans were brought forward. You know, I started to, I can't remember the jump from nutrition into biohacking, but it was definitely something around fasting. It was like nutrition. And then it was like going without food, not eating at all. What's that look like? And I'm, it's so funny. I mean, this is a good segue for the urine. Like, you know, right now I'm like, I'm basically eating one meal a day and I've been doing this for like 45 days. So I'm not, I'm not wasting away. I'm pretty much the same weight, but I'm really playing with food eating times when I get my calories in. And then I commented before we started the podcast, you ladies were like, what are you guys drinking? And I'm like, I'm drinking my urine. So I have a Dunkin' Donuts coffee cup here. And <laughs> yeah, I was very I, concerned with the Dunkin' Donuts cup. And I was sure there's no way you were actually drinking coffee from there. <laughs> well, listen, I will say my one sheet is probably, I will do a Dunkin' Donuts espresso once in a while. But my my coffee cup, true, it's filled with urine. I'm I'm drinking like a cup of my urine a day. I'm doing auto urine therapy, which the idea, and there is some good science behind it, that your body in the act of breaking down bits and particles of pieces of bacteria, viruses, those are going to be filtered through the kidneys through the urine. So it's almost like you're getting a little homeopathy by drinking your own pee. You're, you're giving your body, again, information from the urine that the body is already, it's conquered some viruses, some bacteria, some mold. And I went through a hmm. massive mold exposure two years ago, two and a half years ago. I mean, massive. We could, we could go into mold if you want. But it was um it was a I mean, horrible, say, horrible slap down. The urine therapy, like that's not new, right? That's been around for thousands of years, right? I mean, maybe not popular today, but it's not something new. It's it's been around for thousands and thousands of years. You know, it's it's I think it's probably the first incarnation of of homeopathy. Again, your your yeah. immune system is breaking down all these pieces of the environment and you're getting, you know, that's a successful journey. It's like the virus has been broken down, processed through the body. And so it's the idea is that you're taking in this information from your body and better programming the immune system to be able to deal with that fighting chronic infections. You know, one thing going through Lyme and cancer and all this thing, my immune system, listen, it's always going to be a little jacked up. So anytime I'm reading about it now, I've never done a podcast on it. I've talked about it on other podcasts. I'm like, I'm a pee drinker, confessions of a pee drinker, which (laughs) could be a whole side business. Um, But there's some really amazing healing stories out there from people getting better on just their own urine. And, and it does. Let me tell you something. I have, it's so funny. I'll totally like, we have a text thread of, you know, friends that we send each other really gross pictures or amazing pictures of our morning poop or whatever. And like, I'm always, I'll send them like these, you know, morning videos of me just like tipping back a glass and they're just like gag factor, Freddie. And I'm like, no, 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 no. There's really, there's a, there's a collection of people out there that do experience whether it's perceived placebo or real benefits from drinking their pee. I don't know enough about it to like really give you all the info, but the theory is you do just a shot of midstream morning urine, right? And then you can take it a step further. This is this might be gross for your audience. Is you actually take the urine and you ferment it for thirty days, ninety days, and you're growing some type of a culture within the within your own urine, and that adds an additional benefit. So there's lots of different ways you can dip your toe in the water. You can dip your toe in the urine, or you can go like full out. You can do like three to four day urine fasts where you're only drinking urine. And one thing I I don't know if you guys have talked about deuterium. Um, depleted water, which is, which is, you know, that 
heavy hydrogen isotopes accumulate in the cell from water. You know, we have drinking water that has extra hydrogen in it. You can look at this extra hydrogen as like a little ball bearing that gets caught in the cell and the nanomotor of the cell. And it actually stops the intracellular motors from breaking apart adenosine triphosphate in the cell. When this happens, it slows down energy production. Well, when you lower deuterium in the body, which is this hydrogen isotope, you give your body the chance to make more cellular energy. So one way your body naturally makes deuterium depleted water is by fasting. Your body makes this pure cellular water, which is in this fourth phase. So again, by drinking your own urine straight throughout two, three days, theoretically, you're getting this depleted heavy hydrogen water. That is way out there for people. They're like, <laughs> I just wanted to start using stevia in my coffee. Where yeah, are you right. going? Like, yeah, so just it. to take a step back right now, because our audience does know about mitochondria, and he was just referring to ATP. You said the, the full breakdown, adenosine triphosphate, but he was talking about ATP, which is the cellular powerhouse from your mitochondria. Well, we'll start there while everyone else is probably Googling urine therapy. While oh, yes, listening. Googling therapy, mitochondria, but... But this, so I'm, I'm working with these doctors. There's a lab that's working with deuterium depleted water. So you can buy this water. You don't have to drink your own pee. And there's questions as to whether like, you know, am I drinking just the deuterium that's coming out of my cells or am I actually making this healthy cellular water from a long day extended fast? You're going to have different doctors. Dr. Pompa is a big fan of this. He talks about mm -hmm. it. Or you're going to have people in this camp of just drinking this special water made to help move deuterium out of the cell. And it's called the Deuterium Depletion Centers of America in LA. I'm working with them right now. They're taking me through a three-month protocol where I'm drinking this water, which is real expensive. It's real expensive water. But they're also showing extension of people with metastatic cancer doubling life expectancy, even people with glioblastoma, which is an untreatable brain cancer, which is kind of like, think about brain cancer like, it's like gum in a rug. Like, go ahead and try to do surgery on gum and a rug. You're going to cut out the carpet. Like, you can't just get it. It's inseparable. That's what glioblastoma like. It's a, it's a cancer that's like a spider web in the brain. So it kind of goes everywhere. But they're showing longevity, increased life expectancy from water, which is so rad. I mean, yeah, like I've, I've watched, yeah, I've watched a family member pass away from glioblastoma. It's not cute. And treatment's mm -hmm. even less cute. Yeah. I had a friend in college that had it. She survived like three years, but mm. yeah, it's hard. Really hard. It's hard. There's another, there's another, you know, I'll jump all over the place if I'm not reined in. So just feel free to stop me. But there's <laughs> another, you run with it. there's another clinical trial using frequency, electronic fields, um, generated fields to work with cancer, small cell lung cancer, horrible cancer to have, really difficult to treat and glioblastoma. There's a company called Novacure, and they're delivering frequency through a patch that sits on your brain or your lungs, and you wear a battery pack. It delivers, I think it's a high and a low frequency simultaneously, and they're separating these cancer cells, the revision of cells, the division of cells are stopping that. So we're having people have complete remission and cures, and obviously an extension and quality of life with no chemotherapy using frequency. Amazing. So there's a lot of cool stuff happening out there in the, in the world of wellness that you absolutely will not hear about that. If you're not digging for yeah. clinical trials or these alternative methods, you're not going to hear about it. The challenge for me is, and why I want to do Beautifully Broken, why I'm, even though podcasting, as you know, is an investment that doesn't always have a financial return, is that we're drowning in information and we're really struggling for knowledge. And order matters, order of operations matters. When you try something, what, what order you, do I change nutrition? Do I work on sleep? Do I do water? Should I go do what Freddie said about this podcast and go extreme and start drinking my pee? It's a lot. And then we get decision overload, just trying to make healthier choices, right? Decision overload is where it's at. Yeah, it's, it's para, uh, yeah, analyze into paralysis, into indecision. So it's like, you need a guide, you need a coach. And I think it's, the question comes back is, you know, who, do, who do I go to? You know, who do I go to? I like, <laughs> I'll nominate myself because I've been through most of it. And at least, at least I can tell you, here's what worked for me. That's usually what I do for people. You know, I, I mm -hmm. say, this is what works for me. And, and the way I can do that to multiple people, 
without sacrificing my little, little time that I have is the podcast. Mm -hmm. You know, I can have on a guest, we can talk about it. I can say, well, this is, this is what I hear from users. This is my experience. But I think anybody who's pitching you their system, their way without knowing you or your body, that's where we just, we get into trouble. We get into trouble. Well, that's why we love biohacking so much, right? Supporting that everyone is so different, finding what works for you. And, and yeah, the information overload is just insane right now. And I, I thought this was kind of funny this week on Instagram. I posted this quick little thing about the problems with oat milk. You wouldn't believe how many messages I got back. What? Oat milk's bad. Oh my gosh. I drink this every day. Like that. Yeah. I was going to tell you the example. same, Renee, because I reposted your post and it's just, you got everyone is up. freaking out. They're like, what am I going to drink now? I'm like, are you drinking it in the first place? Right. And that's one thing that people are doing that they think is healthy. So just think about how many other things they're doing because they're misinformed. So like you said, Freddie, it's like, find someone that you resonate with that has been through it, like the three of us, right? We've had our own experiences. And once you find that person, hopefully you can trust them and and become a biohacker and figure out what works for you. But mm. yeah, podcasting is great. We can just, you know, spit out this information much better than working one-on-one with clients, you know, thousand hours a week where you're just killing yourself. The podcast is yeah, a great I- platform. I mean, there's, listen, there's benefits to both. I, I just got done with a call with the School of Applied Functional Medicine run by Tracy Harrison, who I absolutely love. You know, she's probably one of my gurus for an educational body. You know, if there are coaches out there that are looking for a platform to learn functional medicine and learn it right, you know, I always point to Tracy. If, if it's somebody, if, if somebody is looking to take your passion for health and wellness and you want to be a coach, then I always tell people to look to Carmen Hunter like the the Institute for Functional Health Coaching, which you need to know, you know, what I love about Carmen School is, and, and Lauren went through the program, is that she, it like takes away, it simplifies it. It's like, okay, mm-hmm. take the drama away. Here's an intake form. Here's the contract. Here's the expectation. Because I remember when I used to be going through, people would call me all the time. That's why I started like, oh, I should, you know, I should get certified in this. I should learn what I'm doing before I just spit out information about my journey. I would just dump information on people and they'd be like, ah, uh, and it would be so much that it, what, what I learned from going through a really good school is that, okay, structure matters. You've got to mm-hmm. deliver in digestible doses so yeah, people yeah. can be, even be in the space where they're ready to make an informed decision. But 90% of it's education. Right. And the basics are just so powerful. The basics. And I think it could be, I mean, it's paralyzing for the clients to feel like they have all these decisions to make, but it's paralyzing also for the health coach to be like, where do I even begin? We do know the basics and we can always start there. And I agree with you. That's where Carmen's program is really empowering is we're just talking about quality food, movement, stress reduction. Like we know these things and they're going to work for everyone. Yeah. They're going to make your life better. I think a fundamentals course has been something I've been really kicking around that I'm passionate about. It's like light, water, sleep, dirt, food. Like I could do nature, like, right. It's all free. Cover these bases. Come back to me in six months. Tell me how you feel. Yeah. And then we can talk about the deuterium depleted water, right? And then we (laughs) can talk about, and then we'll talk about pee. (laughs) Then we'll talk about pee. Oh yeah, but it's nice Activated. to know that those are options. Like there's always a level up. There's always a level up after that. And after that, there's always more. But until we have that foundation, it can be really overwhelming. It can be. I think that's one of the things that I see I see being a, a challenge in biohacking and the biohacking movement. Where is your where is your where base camp for you? Like where's home? Where do you sit at home? Where's like the things that you absolutely know that are essential to you being well, you know, we often want to go off and we want to try, you know, I want to try this machine that moves like, you know, a million micro Tesla through my mitochondria. And that could, it's, it's very possible that that biohack, you're just not ready on a physical, emotional, or biochemical level. And I think for me, the one thing that challenges me with the biohacking movement is everything has its time. Everything has its place, but we can't use these tools to spiritually bypass the work that you need to do. 
Mm -hmm. And if I had to speak to one passion point around moving through chronic illness and, and really climbing up the mountaintop to feeling good and empowered, you can't circumnavigate the emotional spiritual work. It's, it's the most important. It's the biggest limiting factor that I see people struggling with to get well. I don't say that. I don't say that to point at anyone to say, oh, you're not well because you're not willing to do this. It's the hard work. Mm -hmm. It's the hard work to go in and talk about, you know, you were a victim of sexual trauma or rape or that you lived in a household where one of the parents was going off and having an affair, which everybody knew about but nobody spoke about that stuff lives in your cells. There's no other better way to say it. It lives in your cells and you yeah. will have improvements. The pee, the water, the oxygen, the amp coils, it'll all yield improvements, but you're going to slide back to your base programming. You're going to, you're going to, you're, we, you know, we like, we, we, oh, what is it? We rise. We, we always fall back to our basic level of training. Hmm. And that's why like the morning meditation, a gratitude journal, doing these long extended fasts where you're forced to look at the self-talk that happens every single morning. What's that chatter look like? It's so hard to do that work because it's not exciting. It's not fun. It's not sexy. You know, it's not packaged mm -hmm. up in a nice whoop band or a ring or it's just hard. <laughs> it's hard. It is. And it's like, yeah, it's, it's the, but that's, that is a universal truth. Like if you're ready to do that work and you're ready to get, if you're ready to hurt, if you're ready to cry, if you're ready to feel the pain, I think that for me, it's like, wow, there is so much power, untapped power that I think biohacking, we're dancing around it a little bit. Right. I think it just, it yeah. deserves its place. It deserves a spot on the pedestal which I don't sure. always think it, 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 it gets honored as. Yeah, I, it can be like the candy on top for sure because you have to get uncomfortable. And, you know, these toys are fun. You, mm -hmm. can't, you definitely have to go through it, not around it. Totally. That's a really great point. Yeah. So totally. yeah, the emotional piece, I'll, I'll never forget when I first got into health coaching, I don't know, 10, 10 years ago maybe. And this doctor I was training with, he said, before you start talking about nutrition and all that, you have to ask the patient, when did you decide to get sick? And I'm like, you want me to ask someone that? Are you kidding? <laughs> like, I'm going to offend them. They're never going to come back, you know, but I'll never forget that. You know, that is such a big mm. piece because like you said, if there's something buried deep in your cells, some emotional trauma, you know, yeah, you change your diet for a week and then you go back, right? You, you do slide back if you don't address that. So, and you do a great job of that on your podcast. I think you've had some mm. great people on that have really opened up and shared what they've been through and how that transformed their life. Mm -hmm. So I, I highly recommend people check that out. It's beautifully broken. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we get real there. We, we, and I ask people, you know, I've gotten into this, uh, I've gotten into the habit of a pre-interview or just a phone call. And I, I say as much as I want you to be able to speak to your platform and your audience and what you want to sell, or I want to, I want to get into it. Like, and I don't want to redo a podcast you've done in the past. I'm, I'm not, mm. I'm not interested. I want to, I want to, I want to talk about something new. It doesn't yeah. have to be new, but I would like to have a candid conversation because I think therein lies the gold for the listeners when people kind of drop, you know, they drop their guard a little bit. Everybody is in a car. It's like Freddie, Renee, and Lauren, we're in your car right now. We're like all, we're like, you know, we're your co-pilots, your soul pilots right now, cruising down the road. We're exchanging energy. We're sharing information. It's such a gift that, that this opportunity of amazing technological advancements allows us to just establish this relationship. You know, it's, it's so neat. It always, it always blows my mind that, and I'll have people message me from all over the world, like Australia and Germany and Denmark. And Freddie, you don't know how much that podcast meant to me. It's, it's pretty consistent. You know, it's that I have like these great victories, these stories. Wow. You said that about that woman and that relationship. And I'm, I'm feeling the same way and I'm suffocating right now. And I didn't feel like I had the courage to talk to my partner. And then I just sat it down. I just did it. 
I just did it because I realized that life is short, you know? Mm. And, and I think, I think it's so, um, what a gift. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's incredible. It's, it's so good. It's so good. So Freddie, I would love for you to talk about the amp coil. Yeah. As, as, <laughs> yes. We talk about, talk about product and selling. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But I don't want to talk about it as a product. Yes. It's a product. Right. It is kind of a luxury item. Not everyone has access to it, but I mm-hmm. think it's such a perfect medley of all the stuff you're talking about working through the emotional spiritual, but we're using technology to our advantage in this situation. Can you explain how it helped you, how it's helping other people, what you're doing with it since you are mm. a part of Amp Coil. Okay. Yeah, I am a part of Amp Coil. So long story short, when I had a opportunity to buy a home in 2015, I jumped at it and and it's every actor's dream, not to mention all the crap I had been through and managed to pull together a down payment for an apartment. I like bought this beautiful home, home of my dreams, found out six months later, floor to ceiling, black mold. So I started after all these challenges, I started to get really sick again. Couldn't remember words, word recall went into the toilet, Um, energy, anger, lots of anger coming up for me, which Mm. I don't consider myself a terribly angry person, but this mold was like taking over my body. And it was just one more thing. You know, I had done so many things to get well, to go to a spot where I felt good. And then to have this a mold exposure again, which Let's listen at this point, I embrace it. There's going to be something else. I'm, I'm going to, sure. I embrace what's next to be the great teacher, right? So mold was a teacher and I was looking online. I'm looking for mold, toxicity, Lyme, long-term chronic illness. And I start studying PEMF, pulse electromagnetic fields broadcast into the body. So I'm, I'm studying Dr. Pollock and I'm looking at all these biohacker. Obviously I'd heard Bulletproof Radio. they had had multiple shows on PEMF. I'd actually bought one in the past. I'd bought the Soma Pulse, which is a little battery driven device, which has too many coils, which emits like four frequencies into the body. And you'd put it like on your sacrum or your neck. And it actually made me very sick. That little, little device, I would use it. I would want to throw up. Wow. It made me very like prone like towards, Herxheimer? Yes. Yes. Like my liver was like starting to move stuff that the rest of my body was not ready to handle. Mm. I mean, this little, so little for better, the audience, that's a detox response. Can you just explain that your body was overwhelmed? Oh yes. The Herxheimer response. So it's named after some scientist who said, you know, when the body is overloaded with general environmental toxicity, toxicity from bacteria bacteria, viruses, diseases, that you start to feel just generally unwell. You'll have an exacerbation in the symptoms that you're experiencing. That's Mm -hmm. my definition. From my understanding, I think the word's overused. I like to tell people detox response. I said, listen, just like the kitchen sink in your your home, you have a drain. You have multiple drains that lets the garbage from the dirty dishes get out, out of you. Sweating, pooping, peeing, lymphatics, whatever. When those drains are clogged, you got a dirty sink and you're not going to feel well. It's not going to look well. You're going to be a little jaundice. You're going to be um, experiencing dark circles under the eyes. You're going to look like you've been, you know, you've been on a, on a bender maybe, or you're going to experience symptoms like fatigue, headache, jitters, a tremor in the hand. It could be anything. It's so personal. And, and again, the modern medical is going to debate that there even is a Herxheimer reaction coming from someone who went through Lyme and took antibiotics for three years, you start to take antibiotics to kill off a a degree of the infection, you're going to start to feel really crappy. So anyways, so I'm looking at these pulse electromagnetic fields and I come across a a webinar for AmpCoil and I'm listening to these founders that created the technology and they're talking about not only do they have this device that emits a field, a magnetic field to increase cellular charge, it also broadcasts sound into the body. So sound journey, sound therapy. I was like, well, I'm a singer. This is, sounds amazing. They're bringing the body back into homeostasis and let it do what it does through frequency and a modified Tesla coil, which I'm a big fan of Tesla. So I just literally got on the computer and I bought one. I purchased, hit, hit, put it in the cart. I bought it at the time. The model that I bought was the Amp Coil Trekker. It's $10,895. It was the biggest thing I had ever bought. And at that time, their message resonated with me so strongly. And I listened and I went out and heard testimonials from other people who have had similar 
long-term chronic illness stories and had them speaking to, I feel like a normal human. I feel well. I'm not fatigued. I'm not worried about what's next. I heard four or five people mm, say that. I'm like, I'm like, golden, done, checked, bought it. It didn't matter Here's how much it was. Card. Who cares? I'm like, I don't care anymore. It's just money and life is short and I want to be well. So I bought this device and literally within like three months, my energy was like 18 years old. Like my energy was just like from, especially from the long-term chronic fatigue, which we never really got into. I had chronic fatigue so bad. I would, I would sleep like 14, 15 hours a day. I mean, I would just look at my shoes, try to tie my shoelaces and be like, uh, the bow goes to the left. I mean, I would question the process of the shoelaces. Mm. Oh yeah. That's how I've, been, slow- I've been there. My brain yeah. was just, it sucked. It sucked. And this is a thing. This is a real thing for a lot of humans. So my brain and energy came back on so fast, you know, and I just wanted to be, I wanted to be a part of it. So I called the company. I said, listen, I, I, this is making me feel great. I believe in it. And that was my, that was my intro, you know, when I just started to, um, work with them, I started to work with their sales team on how to, how to work people through questions as a coach, how to work people through sticking points on the phone. I'm like, is this right for you? Is it not, you know, and just again, like as a, as from income, coming from a coaching background, it's like, how do we move through to a place of decision? And then I started to help with, with other things in the company, user experience running their webinars, developing community, you know, putting the right energy. Because again, with biohacking, with tools, the danger is to put the tool on the pedestal. And you get coming through the doors, people that are saying, I'm ready for my miracle. Are you going to deliver? Which is an awful spot to be as a tech company. It's just, the, it's just, it's just not, it's just not good. Because a, a, you put the power outside of yourself, just like a doctor or an antibiotic. And that's not what this is. You know, so we have this awesome tool here. So to so to explain Amp Coil really purely, it's it's a tablet that has sound journeys on it. Sound journeys that have frequencies that would complement the body for deep sleep, detoxification, um, circulation, tendon and bone health, everything you can imagine. It's like a library of YouTube videos, and you put play on the video. That journey broadcast through an amplifier where the amplifier couples a pulse electromagnetic field with the sound therapy. They're interwoven. So you're having this pulse electromagnetic field, which is being broadcast through the body through an air coil. It's actually an air coil, an electromagnetic air coil, which envelops the body in a magnetic field. On that magnetic field, again, is these sound journeys. So while you're getting the benefits of a pulse electromagnetic field therapy, which helps with bone healing, it's been studied in many, many peer-reviewed studies by Dr. Pollock, I always refer to him, Um, circulation, depression, anxiety, there's many benefits of the field. However, what we're doing is we're coupling sound therapy. So a frequency between five, between four and 2200 hertz, all these different sounds coupled in a specific order to move the body into balance. And it's, it's as simple as doing this thing three to four times a week. Let's say I'm home and I want to run. I've had a long, exhausting day and I want to run a program called Brain Reboot, which is 18 minutes. And it's all these frequencies to benefit the neurotransmitters in the brain. That's and the my one I do before like, podcasts. I love it. Before podcasts. Mm-hmm. And your brain feels like it's on fire and ready to go. Now, listen, it doesn't, it doesn't happen for some people. Brain Reboot makes them feel foggy and tired because they've got other things going on that need to be moved out of the way. Sure. But the, ef- the efficacy of working on the body's energetic systems is exciting to me for two reasons. One, we're an electrical body before we're a chemical body. Biochemical reactions are downstream of the electronic signaling. The body is a battery. The body has an electronic charge. There's a, a gentleman, Jerry Tennant, wrote a book called Healing is Voltage, which is a rad book. It looks mm-hmm. at all the different voltage and charges of the cell. Voltage is synonymous with pH. So if we look at the different body organs, organ systems, and tissues, we notice that every part of the human body has different voltage. Like the, the I use the example, the heart generally has a voltage of, of 100 and, and 
40 volts, 120 volts. It's a really high charge because it's a work charge, workhorse of the body. So then we've got all these other areas of the body. You know, Jerry points to the fact that like between 90 and 70 millivolts, the body has a charge where it's going to be in wellness. We got to, we get down to 50 and the body can start to become open to getting sick. If you're in 20 millivolts, the body becomes really susceptible to a state of cancer. And I can kind of explain this two ways is that cells have a charge. And when they have a net negative on the inside, a positive on the outside, they repel each other. There's space. We've all seen the picture of red blood cells flowing down a vein all within this space between them, right? They're like, Mm -hmm. or we've seen the spot where we've got a snapshot of blood and the cells are all clumped like big stacks of coins. And, and it's good to know that a cell, a red blood cell is five to 10 micrometers wide. That's all a capillary is. It's five to 10 micrometers wide. How good is the circulation and oxygenation going to be in your body? If you have a stack of red blood cells needed to go to that pinky or that Achilles tendon, it's going to be really limited. Remember those red blood cells are carrying hemoglobin, right? Where where that's that oxygen exchange, the different tissues in the body. So that's why PEMF yields good benefits to microcirculation. We allow those cells to maintain the charge. So the body works better. You know, if I go back to that cellular charge of, you can think about a tumor, you know, a tumor is a, it's a, right. The tissue changes. It's a clump. It's a mass. You poke on it. It's hard. Those cells have a low cellular charge. So they're clumping. Remember, they don't repel with that, that net positive on the outside. They clump. You know, if I look, if I look to, again, back to that cellular charge of the heart, the chart has that, the heart has that 120 to 140 millivoltage. How many times do we hear of cancer of the heart? <laughs> yeah. It's, wow. it's pretty rare. Yeah. It's pretty rare. Yeah. It does happen in, in the epithelial layer sometimes. It's, it does. But generally when the heart loses that cellular charge, you're not alive. You know, the right. heart, yeah. it's, it's like yeah. this epicenter, right? Mm-hmm. And it Good creates point. a field. It's really, it's really rad to think about that the, we can work on the body's energetic systems, right? And we can almost, we can almost like, listen, if you go and do ayahuasca or plant medicine, you're going to have that shaman. They're going to talk with you a little bit, depending on how great your shaman is, that your disease state has actually been planted maybe 10 years before maybe 20 years before, maybe it's from another lifetime. Maybe it's from spiritual ancestral illness. You know, we can look at survivors of the Holocaust and we can look at their generations downstream are more prone to rheumatoid arthritis. Their body is in a stress response. Still Mm -hmm. generations later, that is passed down. That shit is passed down. So A, not only is it really cool that we can work on the body's energetic systems with something like sound therapy, frequency, the coil, it's all good. You can do it with a singing bowl if you want on a lower tech level, but it's important to consider energy matters and the idea that we can move these energetic systems and have an effect on disease downstream in the body. To me, that's very empowering. So Oh my goodness. I could talk. We could do a whole podcast on amp oil. Obviously. Uh, that was the most amazing explanation of how we are energetic beings. We are energetic like, beings. That was yeah. perfect. And I've yeah. never, never heard the explanation about the space. How do you use a battery? And I can show you how we can charge the space, the space within space. That's what Joe Dispenza talks about. Joe Dispenza's best meditation, meditation is the space between space. He's mm-hmm. like, envision your eyes. Envision the space around your eyes. Envision the space around your space of your eyes in the universe. And all of a sudden, your brain's trying to make this mental picture of what that looks like. And you just get ethereal, right? You drop into that meditation into a place where where your life is just different. Yeah. You know, so we've got all these tools. You know, my whole, I could, you know, again, Ampcoil, we could talk about it forever. I'm really passionate about it. It's efficacy for people that are that are really on the struggle bus with those detox pathways long-term chronic illness, Lyme, chronic fatigue. I have seen and witnessed and and interacted with from session one to, to month four, I have seen this do more cool things than I've ever seen in any other biohacking tech that I've been a part of. Now, listen, I work for the company. So take that with a grain of salt. You should. It's It's done really, really cool things. And I've watched people. There's a girl that that we're working with right now 
in Connecticut. Oh, I sold my house and moved to Connecticut. No, so your audience knows <laughs> yes. or they they don't really care. <laughs> but I'm I'm there we're working with this girl right now who is who's 26. You know, she was on uh from the age seven, she was on a cocktail of antidepressants. Mm. Moving oh into Too almost, young. I think moving into almost 16 medications. Wow. It at one point in her life. Now she had Lyme. She had lots of things, lots of different struggles. Let me tell you something, shutting down all the body's receptors to process information with depressants and depressants. We're, we're changing the, the way the electrical current functions in the body with some of those drugs made it really difficult for her to move forward. This girl is down to one med. She wow, has wow. gone from with being withdrawn in college. She's looking for apartments to go to Colorado. She's moving out of her parents' house. You know, yeah, this is this is the story. Awesome. This is a story that I, I, you know, there's many, many of these situations. And the only thing I would say is it goes back to that question that you queued up, Renee. Like, when did, when did you consciously or unconsciously made the choice where you weren't worthy, I would frame it like this, where you weren't worthy of wellness, mm-hmm. where you weren't yeah. ready to get better. Do you, can I tell you my moment? Yeah, please. I've never talked about it. This is please the moment. I've never talked about it. I'll tell you this very vulnerable chapter. I'm writing a chapter about this in my book. I'm writing a book in case anybody wants to buy this book. I'm totally going to totally going to rock it out. And I, I, I remember being so positive and so excited. And so I had this ability to self entertain, which I've gained back a little bit. (laughs) Because obviously, I've basically narrated this podcast. Sorry for talking so much. Um, (laughs) Well, I was I, supposed I, to be, man. So I good. know, I know, but I, but I'm so used to like holding space for other people as a host that I'm like, I try not to, to talk too much. It's your it's, turn. It's my turn to talk. You're the guest. So, <laughs> I'm the guest. I love it. So I had this ability to self-entertain, right? And I was just like, I was just a happy, happy dude. And my parents went through a divorce, a separation as I was going to college. You know, I kind of, as kids, we know when things aren't right. We know when things are off, even though we don't talk about them, things were off. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm an empath. I wasn't aware of it, but I'm feeling all this stuff. So I'm bottling it. And I went to college and within, within like, oh, preface this, I've got like Zach Morris blonde hair, like awesome <laughs> hair, like tucked it by him here. I just, it was like my look. I was so proud of my hair and I wanted to be, I wanted to be. I, in my dream, I never said it out loud. I wanted to be on Broadway. I wanted to be an actor. I went to a very small school, didn't get into the music theater program of the college I went to. I always felt bad about that. And I was like, I, but it was still my dream. Like inside, I was like, I'm going to be on Broadway, which was total crap because I couldn't even do like a box. I couldn't do a jazz square. <laughs> I couldn't do it. I had to do a dance Are there audition. jazz squares on Broadway? I don't know. <laughs> Are there jazz squares? I kind of hope not. <laughs> I think there have been some on Broadway. So I like, I like prep this college audition for like Fredonia state. So I was like, I stepped up on a chair. I sang me and my girl and then I'd step down. And that was my dance audition. Like I hired like a Dolly Dinkles dance teacher. My sister actually hooked me up and like they choreographed like a number for me. I'm like up on a chair. I'm down. I'm back up on a chair. Then I'm sitting in the chair. Then I'm like holding a top hat. This is my dance. (laughs) So I didn't get in. (laughs) So I'm in this school. I'm going to sum this up. I'm in school. I'm like, I'm like, I really wanted to do this thing. I've got this great look. I've got this great head of hair. And like, I don't know what happened, but I I started to like manifest physically this depression that I wasn't, I wasn't good enough to be in the theater department. Mm. And, and I auditioned for a show and, you know, I got into one of the, like the Harlequin shows and, and I was, you know, I'm some kind of, kind of in it, kind of not, I don't know what I'm doing with my life. And I remember taking a shower one day and I started to comb through my hair. I had these big chunks of hair falling out, like in my, in my brush. And, and when I say like the happy, like kid that really didn't have, I didn't feel problems. The depression I started to feel from losing my hair as an 18 year old guy, the shame and embarrassment was unbelievable. Like I remember being like enraged that like I, I have this dream. I want to be on Broadway. I'm already not a good dancer. <laughs> I already can't do a jazz square. Now I'm going to lose my hair at 18. 
And like, it just started to happen so fast. And I freaked out. I remember, and this is how me, I had no skills to deal with any emotional processing whatsoever. So like, I, I was like, literally, I would like sit in the corner of the library and like cry. Mm. I would like brush through my hair and just would, I would sit there for three, four hours obsessing over my hair falling out. Wow. Talk to no one about it. I would like wear hats. I would like decide which way I was walking to class based on like the windiest parts of the campus. Cause I felt embarrassed about the way my hair looked. Oh, I mean, this is the God. level of shame. Like I took so much effort and energy. When I said, when I say I spent 90% of my day worrying and thinking about what was happening with my hair until I got cancer. That's the truth. Like that was the perspective shift because you had identified so deeply with that one thing that wasn't and I was, even you. Yeah, at your I core. wasn't even me. You yeah, know, it was just my hair. And I'm like, I like look so much better bald. But <laughs> I, I just, I could not get over it. I could not get past it. I didn't have the tools, didn't have the support system, didn't talk about anything with anybody that was deep. Just didn't do that as a kid. It wasn't like, it wasn't a thing for me. You know, I didn't get those tools for whatever reason. So I let this, this very small, dumb thing, which lots of people go through. Now, did I, would I expose to like high volume, like environmental chemicals as a child? Maybe. Did I have mercury toxicity? Maybe. Was my hair falling out for a deeper, deeper health level? Maybe. But the way I processed it, I guarantee you those emotions and that shame and that worry, like, it just, it was horrible. It was horrible. It was like my Everest. And when I say like, and, and so like when I went, when I went into cancer, it was so funny. So this is funny. It's not funny, but when I, when I like got to shave my head because my hair was falling out all of it from chemo. And by the way, I had a great head of hair. Like when I look back at pictures of me being like, what was the matter? <laughs> like, I don't see it. But at the time I'm like, I am like Quasimodo. Devastating. Oh. devastating. I mean, it was awful, 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 awful. And, you know, it, even to this day, like when I'll meet guys, like I'll, I'll look at their hairline and I'm like, I'm, I empathize. Like if they're losing their hair, I'm like, I have this like empathy in my heart. I'm like, Oh, that sucks. Sure. Or, or I'm like, Oh, you're totally bald. You seem totally okay with it. Is that true? Is that real? Cause I was, <laughs> And die are, you okay? are you okay? Are you okay? Sure? <laughs> you know I'm not sure like, you're okay. <laughs> I'm not sure you're okay. So it's anyways, but that, I mean, if, if that didn't have a heavy handed role into why I got, you know, why I was chronically ill or it was the processing, man, I just, I just don't know. I just, it, it was such a big part of my, the way I, I was given all these lessons, right? I've given cancer, mm -hmm. given Lyme. I got all these things to learn how to like, put on the pants and really wade through the mud and get through some of this stuff. It was, um, what a lesson to go back and look on it. You know, yeah. it's, we got to look everywhere and anywhere. You got to look under the carpet. You got to be fearless in your due diligence to just don't be afraid of what you're going to see. And don't be afraid of that pain that you uncover because it's painful. Sure. I'm like, I'm sweating. My hands are sweating right now. I'm envisioning myself walking around that poor campus. Uh, Oh. And I was so mad at my mom. I'm like, mom, can you come up with like a shampoo or like a thing that's going to work? There's all these commercials. You know, I did the minoxidil, the Rogaine, the thing, all those commercials. That shit never worked for me. Oh, I mean, but I feel the anxiety and the frustration building up. I can, I can see oh. it coming out of your pores right now. <laughs> no emotional release. It was so hard. Yeah. Just you're downloading so much emotion and information. I mean, mm. we're little computers, right? We're bio computers. Mm hmm. So that, is so that is the truth. That is the truth. Yeah, we do that's need to an be amazing careful. Story. Awareness, really. That's what it comes back to me is like this total body awareness. Like, and even now I'm like, you know, I'm so we've done is biohackers, you know, we do all the work, right? You know, you do all the work to open up your eyes, your heart, your organs, your organ systems. So I'm like, really now, like when the environment changes, when somebody's tone when somebody gets on a phone call with me and they're like, I'm like, right away, I'm like, what's going on? Like, yeah, you know, you're guarded, you're shielded, your anger. And I try as an empath, I try not to take it personally. It is one really, it's one, it's when one thing that working in 
the world of amp coil, right? Because I'm going to tell you this, many of the people that come into our, our, our pond are those that have really struggled. So there's a lot of anger. There's a lot of an, a, a resentment. People have been taken advantage of again and again and again on big purchase items. And it's, it's, I feel that for them. That's why, listen, this is why I literally set a lot of things down in my life. And I'm, I'm very passionate about how do you change that narrative and get people to, Hey, you know, this is not guaranteed. Lots of people have a good result with it. And there is no, there is no miracle in a box, but if you want to try something new, if you want to stick with this and three, four days a week, incorporate it, you know, have someone, the best advice I can give someone, have somebody else track your symptoms. Yeah. Pain level, go zero to 10. You don't get to look at it on next Wednesday. Pain level, go zero to 10. You don't get to look at it. We are a bad mm -hmm. barometer for our health and wellness gauge as human beings. It's mm -hmm. hard for us to track. That's why biohacking, HRV, shit, don't lie. You know, you're yeah. going to, you're going to get a good yeah. picture. Blood work, don't lie. My personal, like I went from having, you know, chitonium, stachybotrys, aspergillus, the mold, the mold mycotoxins in my blood after taking antifungals for a year, they didn't move. Mm. Every wow. one of my mycotoxin level is normal except for aspergillus, which has been cut in half. Wow. Hmm. Is now, now, now again, I say that my body's systems have been brought online. So I'm, I'm able to deal and handle with the mold. I have a liver. I have a toothbrush in my blood. I have yeah. ways to detoxify. When I support those, I feel well. Limiting for me and biohacking coming from this chronic illness, chronic sickness is the fact that like, if it's a treatment and I've got to go get it again, I'm only, I'm like, I'm waiting for that treatment. I'm waiting for crack. I'm waiting for smack. It's like, I want to do something that's going to cue me up. You know, that's why nutrition is so cool. I'm giving my body the raw materials. You know, perfect example, Ampcoil's got a journey for nutrition. You know, so to prime the nutrition sites in the body with resonant frequencies, so you better absorb what you're eating, that's empowering to me. I'm yeah, upgrading it's, it's the- the soil for us to grow from, right? It's the soil for us to grow from. And it's, and it's, I'll say one more thing, you know, yeah, we broadcast frequencies into the body. They're resonant frequencies. They've got to resonate. A resonant frequency is like using, I use this two examples. You've got a singing bowl, right? What happens when you hit a singing bowl, a crystal singing bowl with a fork? You get a loud ding and the sound dies out. Now, if you're to rim that bowl with a, with a, with a mallet, with the right mallet or, or give it a gong on the right spot on that bowl, putting in a resonant frequency. So the energy put into the system grows. That's resonance, hmm, right? It's got to be the right frequency. So another good example of that is like pushing a child on a swing. If you push that kid at the wrong spot, when he's coming back into you, you're going to break your arms. You've tried <laughs> sure. to use yeah. the wrong yeah. frequency. So you've got to meet him in the right spot to add energy into the system. That's another really good one. Another good one that. is two, two tuning forks. You know, if they're both tuned to A flat and I start to bang this one, eventually information travels through space. And this guy, you can stop the first tuning fork. This one's going to sing on the right. So yeah, that's cool. a way that a resonant frequency has traveled through space and a new system has picked up the lesson plan. A new system has picked up the frequency. That's how resonant frequencies are broadcast into this meat suit, right? And we're hoping <laughs> that an organ or an organ system or a cell or your energetic field picks up and better remembers its natural state of being. Yeah. Makes I love sense. the tuning fork uh, mm -hmm. piece of the M coil. It's like tuning a piano. If you find that frequency where it's supposed to be, you're going to make beautiful music. Same thing with your body, right? Mm -hmm. Same thing with your body. And as you know, someone who came from the, the theater world, the song and the dance, even though I had cancer and even though I lost all my hair, even though I had six surgeries and went through chronic illness, you know, I still, I put my body back to perform the lead in Cagney, the musical. I was on stage for two hours and 30 minutes, you know, seven songs, 12 minute dance numbers, you know, that thing, like, one of the hardest roles I've ever watched. I actually got cast in and I watched it. And I was like, oh crap, I cannot do that. I cannot do it. 
And I, I biohacked my way back into being able to do that show for 16 months as the standby for Cagney. 16 months. Not only did I put myself back together from all this crap where it, it is crap and, and it sucks and it's hurtful, molds hurtful, Lyme is hurtful, cancer's hurtful. And they're the best teachers because if mm. you can get up and you can get over, there's no reason you can't get back and inputting energy back into life. And that was my driving factor is that I still want to give. I have more to give. I have more to do. And that was the goal. It wasn't about me being back in the stage and me being a star. I'm like, I have a very unique energy as Freddie Kimmel. And me me being up there on a stage telling a story is going to leave all those 300 people in the house a very different experience, not better, different. And that's what drove me back to, I'm like, I would just want to be well. I just want to feel good. Yeah, It's not that's every an opportunity. day. It's not every day day but it is it is intermixed with days where i want to lay on the couch where i'm sure. down for the count and that's real i mean that's listen You're this is human. to be this is to be human i'm super sensitive to it because i've been long chunks of time on the couch or secluded or not going out for drinks with friends or miss birthdays and family vacations many many for years at a time and 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 so now when i miss one when i take a day and i'm like oh freddie needs a day you know Freddie needs a day. I, I do feel it. I'm like, oh, am I sick again? Is there something the matter? No. Mm. I mean, listen, uh, the, my last 13 months having something that moves energy in my paradigm, a majority of my biohacking stuff sits in, sits in the corner. I use amp coil. I use the AMD foot bath. I get in the sauna and sweat and I move a little bit. Pretty much it. You know, and, and that's pretty much it. So it's, it's, um, it's a cool tool. You know, I, there'll be more, there'll be more people who do similar things right now. It's really unique. Knock on wood. We're yeah. like, it's a, cool a combination for sure. Yeah. 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 I want to, I want to, I want to open it up. You guys, we can, I don't know if I've talked too long. <laughs> I've talked a lot. Man, you talked a lot, but that was magical. It's okay. We have to spread this. You are incredible. Your journey is amazing. I love it that you're still doing the work. Like I hear this all the time. Like I'll talk to you. You're like, oh man, I really got to take a break. And then the next time I talk to you, you're like, I'm in nature. I'm in the sauna. I'm in the foot bath. Like <laughs> you're doing it. You really do commit yourself. It's amazing. You tune in and, and commit. Yeah. I mean, anybody who's going to drink their own pee, you're ready to get better. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! You're yeah, and I haven't seen you grimace. Like there is no weird torsion. Are you ready to drink? <laughs> Listen, I can be, be programmed, and I I believe this. You can be programmed to enjoy anything. Anything. It's it's all semantics. The mind is incredible. It's malleable. If something sucks, now listen. I don't want you to drink your own pee, but I'm just saying it's a good example of you know it really sucks meditating because I'm uncomfortable and I hate my thoughts and I don't like what comes up for me. Well, keep, keep tying it into something, you know, tie it to a piece of dark chocolate when you're done, you know, you can do, you can get creative with yourself. You know, the sauna yeah. there's, there's a, the family that I'm living with, um, this guy has lost like 25 pounds, stopped drinking saunas every night. He's going through general detox on the amp coil. He's like, he's doing it. He's doing it all. You know, he's like, okay. he's like, it's, it takes like two or three things of adding energy to the system. And you're like, wow, life is a lot more easy to tolerate. Cause let me tell you something life is pain. Like they quoted in the princess bride, anybody who tells you life isn't pain is selling you something that's real. It's like, how do we make it a more pleasurable experience? We can do that. We can do that. We can program the brain to make it a pleasurable experience. So Ready before we let you go, because you have shared so many awesome things, of, uh, tips of, for advice and everything. But if you had to pick one thing for people to start doing today, maybe not drinking pee, mm -hmm. one or thing that they maybe. can do today, go. One thing you can do today. Mm, that easy. That would maybe have a big impact. Yeah. Today, I want you to sit down with a piece of paper and. I want you to write one paragraph on why you are worthy of the absolute best life, why you deserve 
to live a life filled with joy, the loving, caring partner that you are are in 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 reverence for in in you are in alignment with that you are perfect for a community that is going to love and support you that that you are completely worthy of all these good things and i want you to write out that paragraph and i want you to sit with it and if it sucks i want you to write it tomorrow and if it's still not amazing i want you to write it the next day and keep going until you feel so good about that paragraph that you're proud of it, that you can actually see that partner, the relationships, the money, the health, the vitality, that you're very deserved of having and owning. Because once you can see it and you know what it is, what it looks like, what its name is, what it feels like, how it smells, you're going to start to make choices that open the doors for those things to come into your life. That is, that is truth. I have told you, I would tell you how many times I've seen people they tell me what they want and, and it's non-specific, it's non-committal, it could be anything. You're waiting for something to fall into your lap. The universe answers when you get specific. So you think about who that partner is, what the level of healing you want, how much money you want to make, how you want to be making it, who you want to make it with, the impact you want to have in the world. You're going to create and attract and invite that vibration in to being. Do it. Don't not do this assignment. That's crap. Yeah, that's great. Make yourself a note of the phone and the phone, pull over, make yourself a note in your iPhone. I'll do it again today. I will do it again today. I'll write a new paragraph, but you've got to do that on the regular and revisit it because it's going to change. Hmm. And it's just so important. People don't know what they want. I find that I find we're, we're so yeah. remember we're mini computers. Like um, Lauren said, we're mini computers. Well, you've got a lot of information coming at you from the outside world, other people's objectives, their wants and needs, marketing, advertising. I, I guarantee the number of people that have done this work on this podcast, I bet it's pretty small. I bet a lot of it is pre-programmed information coming from your parents, your existing community, outside sources, and you don't even know what it is. So do that work, start there and then make a plan, then decide what biohacks you need to get there. I'm going to do it today. Kimmel. <laughs> you are welcome, everyone. Freddie Kimmel. <laughs> That's incredible. Now I'm going to do it Freddie. today. We're all going to yeah, do me it. Too. Me too. We all need it. All right, you guys, we could sit here till 5 p.m. and let Freddie go because there's just <laughs> so much more magic. But instead, we're going to redirect you to get more of him because there is so much more. You can find him. He has a website, Freddie Set Go. I think that's like the most brilliant name. It's so good. Freddie Set Go is his website. He's also Freddie Set Go on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and his incredible podcast is called The Beautifully Broken Podcast. Subscribe, tune into it. He's amazing. There's so much more magic. This is incredible. Freddie, thank you so much. We've been waiting for this one for a long time and it exceeded expectations for sure. So absolutely. We love you, friend. Oh my God. Of course. Thank you. Yeah. It was an honor to be here. I can't wait to have the biohacking babes on the beautifully broken podcast. Yes. We're going to reverse the situation. (laughs) It's going to be amazing. Um, but thank you so much. This is awesome. Thank you everyone for tuning in. If you have not yet written a review or given us a rating, let us know what you think of us. Um, we love to hear your feedback and we appreciate your support always and forever. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Love this episode of the biohacker babes podcast, head over to Apple podcast to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. We truly appreciate your support. Until then, happy biohacking.